Since we now collect the majority of our produce from shops and markets that have been spread across the globe, we tend to forget that without farming, this would be next to impossible. And with the population increasing in droves like it is, the agricultural sector has had to find a way to both produce goods and maintain its support of the earth. One strategy that farmers have started to use to ensure this is that of regenerative farming. But what exactly is regenerative farming? And how will it help save the environment? Well, whether you're a farmer looking to diversify or or just want to know as much as possible about the conservation strategies in use, stay right where you are, as we're about to explore everything there is to know about regenerative farming. So, strap yourselves in and get ready for some growth, as things are about to get interesting. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications turned on, so you don't miss out on any of the new videos we post. The Need for Sustainable Farming Practices Our planet is in the middle of what many have called a climate crisis, and while politicians and power-hungry CEOs have tried their hardest to deny the effects of global warming, there's no doubt to those in the farming community that the effects of climate change can be felt throughout the year. Regardless of how cold it may be in certain parts of the world, the cause of this change appears to be the increase in anthropomorphic carbon dioxide, meaning carbon dioxide that is released by some form of human creation. The potent greenhouse gas is essentially released when our civilization burns fossil fuels in an attempt to generate electricity, which in all fairness, is incredibly important for us to continue to flourish, but there are other means of energy generation available to us, from solar power to hydro or wind-powered factories. Anthropomorphic carbon dioxide is released when fossil fuels are used to run large pieces of equipment as well, as well as our beloved motored vehicles. Once more, there are clearly other means of powering this equipment of ours, but not everyone can afford to buy the newest Tesla, with these people being thus stuck using gas guzzlers regardless of how concerned they might be for the environment. Environment. The agricultural industry is also known to be responsible for contributing towards the warming of the earth. In fact, together with forestry and other land uses, it is responsible for around 25% of all greenhouse gas emissions, which have been created by human beings. Worse yet, as the global population rises, far more production will be required in both the agricultural and industrial fields, which will clearly lead to an increase in this dangerous greenhouse gas, accelerating the rate at which global warming is bound to take place. And considering how the world population is charted to increase by about 3 million people in the next 30 years, there is a definite demand for us to change how we are living, generating electricity, and propelling the agricultural industry forward. A recent study has actually found that unless farming methods change, rising emissions from human land use will have the effect of jeopardizing the Paris Climate Agreement, and it is for this reason that the agricultural industry across the board needs to change, making use of the strategies of sustainability to ensure that it contributes as little carbon dioxide to the environment as possible. Regenerative agriculture as the solution. Research has shown that adopting alternative farming methods could have a dramatic effect on land use emissions, not only decreasing the amount of anthropomorphic carbon dioxide in the air, but improving the overall soil health, which farms are currently battling with. You see, in order for a crop yield to be successful, the produce must be able to draw nutrients from the soil. It is only when there are enough nutrients in the soil that the crop yielded will both look and taste delicious. But when the population increases along with the demand for more produce, farmers try their best to yield more crops by giving their soil less time to recoup the nutrients that were used for the last yield. What farmers are then left with is poor soil quality. The only way that the agricultural sector has been dealing with the problem of having poor soil quality is by making more space for crops. And this, unfortunately, often means the eradication of forested areas. Since trees do a pretty great job of taking in carbon dioxide and transforming it into oxygen, we see the amount of carbon dioxide in the air increase as these trees have been cut down in an effort to make more space. In other words, if farmers can use an alternative method to this, avoiding major deforestation, then the amount of anthropomorphic carbon dioxide in the air will definitely drop significantly. One such alternative method has been termed regenerative agriculture and has been championed as the next best thing during Earth Day 2021. It is considered to be a holistic approach to agriculture which aims to improve the resources it uses, rather than depleting or destroying them completely when attempting to supply such a high demand. In essence, regenerative farming is aimed at the building up of what previous agricultural practices have already broken down. As such, regenerative farming as an approach consists of the rebuilding of organic carbon, the regeneration of topsoil, and strengthening of its health and vitality, the increasing of biodiversity,
biodiversity, the support of biosequestration, the improvement of the water cycle, and of course, the general increase of resistance to climate change. And as you can imagine, regenerative farming has a number of benefits at the end of the day. Forms of regenerative farming. As we said earlier, plants absorb carbon dioxide during a process called photosynthesis, converting it along with glucose and sunlight into the growth of leaves, stems, and roots. Any excess is sequestered in surrounding soil and ends up feeding microbes and fungi, which essentially leads to the provision of nutrients for the plants. This organic carbon in soil is thus the main component of soil's organic matter, which offers structure and richness to the soil. This carbon can actually stay trapped in the soil of the earth for thousands of years, but is quickly released into the atmosphere by current farming practices, such as plowing or tilling. By mechanically agitating the soil with methods such as these, we are left with bare, compacted soil that is quite hostile to soil microbes. In other words, low or a decreased number of tilling practices have the effect of increasing soil organic matter, resulting in healthier and more resilient soil. Soil health can also be improved by increasing the amount of plant diversity in the area. Different plants release different carbohydrates into the soil through their roots. So the greater the diversity in a patch of soil, the greater and more varied the amount of nutrients in the soil, leading to rich soil and better crop yields. Diversity goes hand in hand with a practice called crop rotation, which is when the farmer rotates what is grown in the soil in question with the crops from another patch. Research has shown, after all, that when the same crops are grown in the same soil year after year, the soil may become severely depleted of a specific nutrient that the crop requires to grow. Switching this crop out with another that relies on a different nutrient, and you'll ensure that no specific nutrient is ever lacking from your soil. It's a simple method of ensuring that your soil remains healthy and prevents you from the situation in which your soil becomes dry and useless as far as growth promotion is concerned. The planting of crops is another practice that has been adopted by farmers in recent years and forms part of what is now called regenerative farming. Cover crops are those crops that are planted with the intention of covering the soil rather than leaving it bare. These crops thus protect the soil from natural degradation, which is often in the form of erosion or wash away. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that when these cover crops cover the soil, the nutrient-rich topsoil can't be blown or washed away, leaving it rich, diverse, and ready for when another crop yield is expected in the future. Other regenerative practices have been aimed at the tackling of farm waste. Adding composed material to soil has the effect of quickly adding to the nutrients within the soil, giving microbes a range of produce to consume to form these nutrients. Rather than by buying compost, though, a great many farmers have taken to recycling the waste already generated by the farm, incorporating it into the soil and forming a natural compost. This is especially useful when a farm is not only concerned with the growth of produce, but rearing of cattle, for example. It is also for that reason that so many farmers have taken to diversifying what they do for a living, the future of regenerative farming and the climate. As much as the money-hungry people of the world don't want us to know that global warming presents a serious threat to the environment, we have already witnessed some atrocities linked to the process. Polar bears, for example, are being forced closer to human settlements as they no longer have a sufficient amount of ice to hunt on, without which they have no food. This is why they have moved closer to settlements to be able to dig through human waste, like baboons have a tendency of doing on the African continent. This is not only sad, but worrisome, as the melting of the ice caps is sure to result in the rising of sea levels, causing a massive amount of damage to coastal cities. Regenerative farming offers farmers the chance to play an active role in the mitigation of this threat to not only their livelihoods, but the environment as a whole. Experts in the field have indicated that this method of alternative farming is one of the most effective ways to reverse climate change and encourage food security for an ever-growing population. And as such, it is incredibly important to ensure that these methods discussed above are used as much as possible to help future generations. What do you think? Feel free to let us know in the comments section down below.